What do you notice? Good morning, my environmental detective friends. Looking forward to doing some new investigations and detective work with you. Let's go find clues right here in our own neighborhood environment. I predict that turkey vultures don't go in our yard because there's not rotting food. food. Oh, my environmental detectives, I'm so sad that it's our last episode because I've loved learning about squirrels and birds. Today, I'm very excited because I know some of our friends are going to share what they learned about the vulture. Let's see if Maddox's prediction is correct. I can't wait to learn from you, my friends. But first, let's do a little bit more research on some of the questions we had. So let's go down now to another question about why do robins have blue eggs and other eggs have and other birds have white eggs? In this book, Birds, Nests, and Eggs, we can read that the robin usually lays four eggs. They are green, blue, and they each would fit on a quarter. And the female sits on them for 12 to 14 days, about 9 to 12 days after hatching the young birds start to fly. Okay, those are colored eggs. Now I'm going to find a bird that has white eggs, and I see the red-winged blackbird has colored eggs, and they're also in a nest. I'm gonna go to, ah, the woodpecker. They have white eggs. Downy woodpecker eggs are about penny size, and usually there are four or five, and they are pure white. Both parents incubate the eggs equally for about 12 days. In about three weeks, the new woodpeckers start to fly. But I'm still wondering, why do robins have blue, and why do some have white? Let's go back to our other big book. And there's a section just on eggs. And look what it says, colorful eggs. A bird that lays its eggs in a dark hole will have a white egg, like the woodpecker, inside the, lo the log. And a bird that lays its eggs outside will lay a camouflaged egg so that it is hidden from hungry predators. That's why the robins eggs are colored in their nests. They're not in a cave or somewhere dark. Interesting. So we can put here, it has to do with where their nests are. So I'm going to write the word nests to remind me to write what we learned about why some eggs are white and some eggs are colored or camouflaged. So do we answer this question? Why do robins have blue eggs and other birds have white eggs? Yes, we were able to answer that question by learning about how white eggs are usually inside a hole or a cave somewhere dark and how colored eggs are usually out in a nest or possibly visible by predators, which is why they're camouflaged. And while we're learning this, it makes me go back over here to Sebastian's what he knew about birds, about nests and how they make nests out of leaves and sticks. So it makes me wonder, well, what else have we learned about nests in our learning about eggs? So let's go back to our book, The Big Book of Birds, and let's find the section on nests. And I'm going to go to the page about nests. I used my table of contents, and here's my page. It says, nests. Where is the best place to make a nest? Well, wherever it is safe and warm. For some birds, that can be in a tree, like our woodpecker, on the ground, or in a cave. So it makes me go, well, are they making them all out of leaves and sticks? Well, we know 
that some birds use all sorts of materials to build nests, from sticks and grass to mud and fur. One bird, the Asian tailor bird, makes a pocket for its nest by sewing two leaves together using spider's web for thread. And here's another one, the shady lair, somewhere dark and cold. It's a cave swiftlet makes its nest out of spit and sticks to it to the cave roofs. Poli people collect the swiftlet's nests to make bird's nest soup. Interesting, the things we learn. And we also saw in this other book how our woodpecker, one of the birds we see in our area, we saw its nest was inside the tree. And that's where we saw its white eggs. So, Sebastian, we, yeah, we definitely have seen birds use leaves and twigs. What else have we now seen that birds also do for their nests? Before we hear from our friends, let's watch that vulture clip again. Let's listen carefully to understand why the vulture is built the way he is. So this is Vladimir, our, our turkey vulture here at Wild Care, and he is actually 35 years old, which I think is just amazing to think that these birds can live this long. He is one of our educational animals. He's one of our wildlife ambassadors, and he is actually not releasable and couldn't survive in the wild because someone found him when he was a very young vulture and thought he'd make a good pet. Now, as you probably know, vultures and all wild animals actually make terrible pets, but especially turkey vultures, because they have a couple of really interesting adaptations that make them both very effective at what they do in the wild and also really disgusting. The first one is that they vomit when they're stressed. So when a turkey vulture is very, very upset, the first thing that he does is vomit. So that's really disgusting. The other thing that turkey vultures do that make them very unpleasant when they're in, your, in, in, in a captive situation is they poop on their feet. So as they are, and this is actually a very effective thing for the work that they do, which is cleaning up dead things in the environment. As they are eating, they poop on their feet, and that means they are sterilizing the carcass, and meaning that all of the nasty germs and stuff that are on a, on a, on a dead animal don't end up in the environment. So it's a really useful thing that they do, but yes, not something that makes them terribly fun to be around. So turkey vultures are incredible animals. They're really, really beautiful. If you see a vulture flying, you can recognize that he's a vulture instead of a hawk because he flies with his wings in a V shape. So any time you're out walking or driving around and you see a big dark colored bird with his wings in a V, think to yourself, V is for vulture and you'll know that that is a turkey vulture. And he is soaring around looking for things to eat. Now turkey vultures eat dead things, they eat carrion. And that is the reason that they have that bald head. If he had feathers on his head, he wouldn't be able to get his head into something that was dead and gross. And he would end up with it stuck all over in his feathers. So that naked head that the vulture has allows them to eat their very, very special diet of carrion. And it's one of their very, very special adaptations. Okay, now the best part of the show. Let's learn from my environmental detective friends about what we learn. Today, I'm going to show you how to learn about vultures. So, they eat dead animals, they throw up on their mat, and they, they fly in circles, like a V-shaped
no birds visited there, so we moved it to a new tree. Two house wrenches sat on the tree on the board feeder and ate pretty much all the food. I noticed that I think that the boards did not like being so close to people so that's why they didn't come to it in the lemon tree. We also think that they also were a little bit afraid of getting caught. We love seeing boards on our board feeder new tree. I wonder what you noticed then. I don't know about you friends, but I'm ready to hear an awesome story. Hello boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Johnson and I'm really happy that you are joining me today. We're going to have some fun playing with words. Words about birds. And we wrote this yesterday. You helped me write this wonderful chant. So let's go ahead and look at it together. Let's read it together. So you're gonna read with me. Ready? I can spell by Lisa Johnson. I can spell nest, N-E-S-T. I can spell egg, do it with me, E-G-G. -G. I can spell wing, W-I-N-G. Read it with me. But I can't spell feather. I can spell beak, B-E-A-K. I can spell fly, F-L-Y. I can spell bird, B-I-R-D. But I can't spell feather. Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Help me out. Spell it with me. F E A T H E R. Feather. Yay, we did it. You did a great job. You were awesome readers. Listen to you reading all of those wonderful words about birds. Hey, let's take a look at what some of these words start with. Let's listen for their beginning sound. That means the very first sound that you hear. So we're really going to have to use our ears and think about what we're hearing. Let's look at this first word, nest. And I'm going to highlight what we hear first. Say it with me. Nest. Nest. I'm going to slow it down. Nest. What do we hear first? What did you hear? Oh, right. That's what I heard too. I heard mm. The letter N makes that sound. Mm. Nest. What about this word? Egg. Let's say it really slowly. Egg. Egg. What do you hear first? Good job. The sound eh. The letter E can make that sound. Let's look at this word. Wing. Say it very slowly with me. Wing. Wing. Did you hear that? What? That's what I heard too. The W makes the W sound. Wing. Let's look at beak. Beak. What do you hear first? Beak. 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 B. Yeah, the letter B makes the B sound. B. That's the first sound. Hey. Let's have some fun with this word, beak. We know we heard the letter, we heard the sound, B. I wonder if we could think of some other words that also have that sound, B. So I'm gonna take this paper and you can help me make a page for this book that I'm making. I'm making a book that's all about the first sounds I hear with things. And this says capital B, lowercase b, what begins with B? Well, we already found one word. And if you want to make a book at home, you can just get a piece of paper and pick a letter. And if you know something that starts with that letter, you could just draw the picture. Here, I'll draw an arrow to the beak on the bird. And let me think of something else that starts with B. Oh, I could draw a bird like that flying in the sky. I know that bird 
but bird starts with B. I could draw the bird like that too. I'm not, I'm not a really good artist, but you don't have to be a good artist. You can do really quick sketches. Bird, what else starts with B? Hmm, B, B. I could do, B. Can you help me think of something? B, ooh, a boy. Boy could start with B. Ooh, a banana. B, B, banana. Here, I'll color that in yellow so it looks a little bit more like a banana. And when you're making a page about a letter, you can just draw pictures. And if you want to, you can also write a word. I could write what I hear for boy, B, boy. That's fun. Hey, I have an idea. Let's go to the garden. Let's go to the garden and see if we can find some things that start with B. And really, we could just look around and we could look at all sorts of different things in the garden and see if we could figure out what sounds they start with. Will you come with me? Let's go to the garden, all right? Great, I will see you there. Hi, everybody. I'm Mrs. Johnson and I'm here in the garden and we're going to look around and see what we can observe and think a little bit about what sounds things start with. And I brought my nature journal with me. So you can do this when you go outside or even inside your house. But I'm gonna look around and see what I can observe. <gasps> oh my goodness, look, here we've got these little tiny apples. They're just starting to grow. I want to think about apple, apple, ah, ah. I think apple starts with A. So I'm going to draw a picture of an apple in my nature journal and then I'm going to write the letter A. Perfect. The apple is growing on a tree. I'm going to draw a picture of the tree. And it has some leaves. And I'm going to try to figure out what sound tree starts with. And one thing I can do is say it very slowly. And also if I say it more than once, sometimes that helps my ear notice that beginning sound. Tree, t tree, tree, t I know I hear t. I think it starts with t, t, and that's a T. I'm going to draw that in the air. I'm going to draw it in my nature journal. What else can I see? Oh, I see a plant. Plant. I'm going to draw the plant. And plant, plant starts with P. And it has really big leaves. Leaves. I think I'm going to put two letters next to this picture. An L and I can draw an arrow to the leaf. Leave, leaves, yep, L, plant, leaves, and here I see a rock, rock, I like rocks. This rock feels really warm, it's been in the sun, rock, r, rock, I think that's an R, and I'm just writing what I think, if I, if I'm not Correct, that's okay too. I'm gonna draw a picture of a rock in my nature journal. What else can I find? What's in this garden box? Oh, I recognize this plant. I like to make salads out of this, this vegetable. This is kale. Let's draw some kale. Some leaves and a big long stem. And what does kale start with? K kale, kale, kale. I hear k, k. That's the first sound I hear when I say kale. I think it might be a K. Draw K. Hmm, what else could I observe? Well, you know, sometimes observing means listening. Will you listen with me? Let's listen in the garden and see what we can hear. Let's be really quiet. Do 
you hear that? I hear birds. I hear birds. They're chirping. They're singing. Oh, I don't see a bird right now, but I hear a bird. So I know that they're maybe hiding up in that tree. Oh, I do see one flying in the sky over there. I'm going to draw a bird. Oh, and we were talking about bird when we were inside the classroom. What did we say that, oh, I remember bird starts with B. All right, I'm going to call this my garden letters. And you can title your page anything you like. You could do this at home, you know. You could find your sit spot and you could be quiet and listen. And if you hear something, you could try to figure out what sound does that start with. If you hear a dog barking, maybe you could figure out what that starts with. And then you can start looking around and you can take notes in your journal about what you hear and what you see and what sounds do you think those start with. So give it a try. It's a lot of fun and who knows what you will see and what you will hear and you are going to do a great job. I just know it. Thank you for joining me here in the garden. I hope you have lots of fun in your sit spot and with your nature journal. Goodbye. So as we continue to continue to learn about birds and observe outside, one of my favorite ways to explore new places is by reading a book. And this book, Ruby's Birds, written by Mia Thompson, illustrated by Claudia Davila, takes me to one of my favorite places where you wouldn't think you would see a lot of nature, but it's New York City, Central Park. And Ruby lives in New York City and she discovers the beauty of birds. Let's see her journey. Ruby's Birds. School's out, mom and dad are at work, my brother Malik is at soccer practice, grandma's at her spot near the window, Alex keeps her company, things are too quiet around here. I know what to do. This sounds like all of you getting ready for summer right now. I play the piano, the piece my parents say is very grown up. I practice my dance routine, the one Malik calls stomping. I talk with Alex in the secret language that grandma taught us. I sing at the top of my lungs the song I made up myself. Do you know what you're going to do as summer comes? My neighbor, Ava, from downstairs, hears everything. She calls up from her window, Ruby, wanna go to the park? Yes, 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 I sing. That looks like a very happy person. We pass my favorite bakery. We pass Cece's apartment. We walk right past my regular park, the one with the twisty slide and the sprinklers. I guess Ava is going to a different park. I skip to keep up. I follow her all the way to Central Park, where my parents sometimes take us on Sundays when we're all dressed up. Ava is going to the woods. I've never been that way. We sing made up songs about joggers and strollers and fancy dogs. Sounds like they're making songs about everything they see around them. Have you seen any birds yet? Suddenly, Ava stops. She looks up. She is listening. I quiet down and I listen too. 
What's wrong, I wonder? I hear a police car, a plane, some barking. I tug on Ava's sleeve, but she's not paying attention. She holds her binoculars up to her eyes. She is frozen like a statue. And then she smiles a huge smile. Do you see what she sees? I guess everything's okay, so I start singing again. La, 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 la. Ruby, Ava says, you scared him away. Who did I scare away, I ask. Ava flops down on a bench. I sit too. It's a bird. I've only ever seen back in Costa Rica, she says. He's just stopping through on his way north because this is the best patch of woods for miles around. He's quite a singer, just like you. If you stay quiet, we may be able to find him again. He's a gold-winged warbler. I nod. I don't say a word. I don't sing a word either. It sounds like something from a fairy tale. We move carefully. We're serious. We pay attention. We watch for tiny movements in the leaves. We try and try. No luck today, says Ava, but now you know what to do. I sing myself to sleep as usual. On Sunday morning, I beg for a walk to Central Park. Malik's not interested, but it's family time, so he has to come anyway. We pass the bodega. We pass the theater. I sing my song. My family listens along. And at the park, I lead them straight to the woods. I'm silent. I'm serious. I'm paying attention. I hear a rustle in the leaves. Shh, I say. Just like Ava, I'm frozen like a statue. A tiny bird pops out of the leaves. It looks one way, then the other, then right at me. I can't help it. I get that huge smile, just like Ava's. Look, I yell. Ah, yes, said Grandma. I saw a warbler. I sing as he flies away. And there they are. Looks like they're looking at a map. I wonder if they're trying to see where New York City is compared to Costa Rica to see the journey of the warbler. And here's where you can find out more about the golden warbler. A lot of books do this. They'll have a tr story and then they'll give you some facts about something from the story. You know, my environmental detective friends, I'm sad that I can't see you in person right now at the ranch, but as a present for you, I'm gonna show you what I see in my sit spot. Well, detective friends, thank you for joining me on this adventure. Come visit me at Walker Creek Ranch sometime. Remember to get outside, explore, have fun, and be safe. What do you wonder?